All right. Well, um, yes, indeed, my name is Geneviève Fortin, and um, I'm here today to present uh, a brief description of um, the case study drawn from my practicum placement at the Family Support Institute. I'm very grateful for my family that was supportive to me, and uh, I would like to recognize the indigenous people of this area, the Salish, and also where I'm from, probably cousins, the Sinaiics. Um, <clears throat> so the Family Support Institute, or FSI, I was very grateful to land a placement with them, and uh, also, um, working with an organization that aims to uh, strengthen and empower um, and support families that are faced with the um, sometimes extraordinary cir circumstances that come with supporting a family member living with a disability or who is disabled. FSI um, believes that families are the best resources to help one another um, and um, they provide information, training, and uh, province-wide networking uh, to assist families and their communities um, to build on their strengths and their assets. Um, <clears throat> so there's eight staff in the office in the U.S., and there's around 300 volunteers spread out around the province, and all those volunteers are family members. Okay, the case. Well, <clears throat> I was originally asked to produce a cultural competency guide that would clar clarify language used around indigenous people um, and other so-called minority groups in BC. So I decided that a case on the review would be to narrow uh, which cultural competency would need to be prioritized in, or in order to empower the staff and the volunteers and the families. <clears throat> Um, so, through my literature review, I reflected on how cultural safety was uh, the foundation to gaining cultural competencies and uh, in, in that way avoid essentializing um, minority cultures um, because safety, cultural safety and competency cannot exist without the other. And also because Also, because cultural safety is relational, it means that it needs to be created and sustained in partnerships with individuals, families, and communities. So we're all responsible to make sure that the watering of this tree that we're growing, this safety tree that we're growing together gets done. So <clears throat> how I resolve the case? Well, through co-learning, and um, developing the ability to work effectively with the use of different perspectives. So in this case specifically was being aware of the models of disability that are endorsed uh, by the different service providers and the staff and the volunteers um, and basically learning together about each other to, to, uh, would help us take a different perspective. Um, because cultural safety is achieved through also like self-discovery. So uncovering our own biases um, towards other perspectives is also a way to avoid like a colonialist mindset pers um, perspective. Uh, so being aware of our own interse intersectionalities or how we can be minoritized in different ways um, and discriminated um, <clears throat> can also strengthen the skillful use of respectful communication. Knowing who we are and where we are um, will help us communicate effectively. So in this case, it specifically meant to demonstrate the ability to ask respectful questions. So my goal was to understand my supervisor's motivation to request a disguise, not to convince her that it wasn't my way to, that I would appro approach it. So seeking to understand each other with genuine curiosity is key to foster a healthy communication climate. Um, so why is asking questions so hard then, I thought? Well, in two of my little informal interviews uh, with the staff and volunteer, I found that people are scared of being inappropriate. They're scared of 
saying the wrong wrong words or and um, my time is up and um, so I would like to finish on saying that cultural safety is a process it's a, it's a work and movement that we have to constantly um, work towards thank you thank you Shandia. do we have any questions Well, I have one, if I may. I know that you did your practicum at a distance, and to, to, to what extent did that help or make more challenging the growing of the tree? <laughs> well, it was uh, definitely uh, more challenging than I expected it to be. I had the experience working remotely before, but um, so it, it really enhanced the need for effective <laughs> communication in different ways that, and, and to poor planning and having to think ahead instead of, well, the person's right there, so I can just go and talk to this person. I had to, yeah, realize sometimes that, oh, I should have planned this ahead of time because now we're playing phone tag or we're playing email tag. And, yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Hey, thank you so much.